And welcome back to Nancy's Neighborhood. And I told you in the first segment that I had Joe Fivis with us on now. And, and Joe, I had on, and I loved it, Joe called it a meet and greet. Uh, I had him on when he first came to Cleveland. He's our new, he was at that time our brand new city manager. And now he is our city manager, not necessarily brand new. How long have you been with us, Joe? It's uh, coming up on about uh, 11 months, and it's gone extremely fast and, and furious, but uh, that's all good. It has, and there's a lot of things that have been happening, and I don't know whether you want to start with all your little community district gatherings you had, whatever you want to exp tell us what's happening in downtown Cleveland. Well, um, you know, overall, you know, we came to, you know, name the city manager and started talking to a number of community residents, and and I think that there was a need to get more input from from the community. So, um, you know, they're all of our bosses and, and we need to, um, you know, any, any input is, uh, is welcome. And, and so we went and, and tried to develop uh, a process that we can get that community input. We did it in, in two ways. Mm -hmm. um, first one was we did uh, a number of community meetings that we went and uh, council members were there and we did it in their districts. and. Uh, staff were there and we got to address and have a dialogue with uh, all the community residents and um, and it was very successful very well received um, and, and we couldn't be happier with with the turnout but we also part of that is that we went and are doing a community survey and we hope to have about 500 people fill out the survey which would have been a good number right but we um, went through and we got over a thousand people. Oh wow! Yeah. So so we have all that data, and and we've taken, you know, all of that information and we tried to say, well, what what are the community's priorities, and looked at some of the city council priorities, and and we're very blessed to come out with, um, you know, the the priorities that the community had and the community meetings, the survey and what the city council was already doing all seem to have some level of alignment, oh, which, good. which has been very helpful. That, that's extremely good. Yes, it is. So now that you've done that, what is the next step? Well, the next step is to, um, um, two things is, is first of all, put, put the, to figure out what is the plan and what are the things that you want to do, uh, meaning, the, the survey results really pointed towards three things that were um, uh, important among others. But uh, first of all was public safety, um, traffic congestion, yes. um, as we all know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and as far as projects, um, working on, on the downtown, on the revitalization there. And so um, what we've done is we're trying to uh, put that package together and and come up with something and we've presented that to the city council um, you know from a traffic management standpoint um, we're doing a, a number of uh, intersections that um, are congested um, you know pending approval with the city council of course I don't make that decision but but we would do you know Mouse Creek and Paul Huff uh, we would do peerless intersection at Paul Huff right there by the Publix. Yes. Uh, there's backups there. We would uh, widen those out, uh, have more turn lanes so people can get in and out. Also, uh, peerless um, at uh, 25th Street um, is mm -hmm. another project that has some congestion. So those are three projects. Council also wanted to add money in for um, our are looking for ways right now the roads in Cleveland are, are, are in good shape but we're only paving roads every um, if you paved if we paved your road out in front of uh, your home now it would on average be about 27 and a half years oh. before we would be able to repave that and uh, the council has um, bought in and uh, wants to move that as close to 20 years as possible that when it gets to 20 years that we'll have the resources. So so from an infrastructure st standpoint, the city council has been very interested in investing in that. Uh, secondly, from a public safety perspective, um, the, the city council is, has already been um, very invested in uh, looking at hiring some additional police, frontline police officers, uh, improve and build on our capacity and service in, in all areas of the community. 
Um, you know, we're looking at building a new fire station out towards the uh, exit 20 okay. um, area, and and then um, how's that? Um, you know, we've building a fire training center, buying some equipment for our public safety folks, um, doing some really wonderful things. Um, and then obviously the, the third component, which I should have mentioned, was that we're also uh, getting bids and moving forward on building a new elementary school at Candy's Creek Elementary. Yes. yes. And that was a major priority of the city council. Which is not exciting me at all because I come in off that road mm -hmm. every day and it depends on what time of day. I come in because I have Hopewell traffic, then I will have that traffic, and then I will have the Cleveland Middle School traffic unless I turn left off of Lower River Road and go to the interstate. Yep. And I don't really want to do that. I yep. like I like the little scenic drive in. Uh, let me go back to traffic to the traffic congestion. Sure. I didn't realize that one day I was doing peerless going out to Paul Huff mm -hmm. and you have you have the school traffic coming out onto Peerless right there where there's a lane for you to get over here to turn onto Paul Huff, and mm -hmm. it was crazy. Yeah, oh yeah, no question about it. And it was kind of like nobody knew, me included, knew exactly where I was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to turn left onto Paul Huff to go on out to Georgetown, mm -hmm. but it was like everybody else was kind of, so yes, that is a congested park right there. Yeah, and, and we're looking to to proactively address some of those issues because um, that's what, what the residents have, have asked for, you know. So when you go, you have education taken care of, you have some traffic congestion, uh, doing um, investment in public safety. Then then the fourth one is um, the downtown revitalization. Right, right. And, and we're really, uh, I think, building some good capacity and good energy down in that area. Um, a lot of the... The homeowners in that area, a lot of the business owners, are are excited of what what could possibly come in the future. Do you want to talk about the first Friday festivals? Or sure. Do you, okay, go ahead, lead on with that one then. Well, I think it's it's uh, you know we have we have some events coming up, which are the first Fridays. Um, it, it's actually not the city; it's it's the Main Street organization, mm -hmm. which does a fabulous job in providing services and events for the community in the downtown area. But every the first Friday of uh, June, July, and August, they're going to have events, and and they're being sponsored um, um, by an area business and and being able to uh, do some music and some art, and and I think it's going to be. Uh, a wonderful um, opportunity. I think so too, and I know a lot of people, because I'm on the Allied Arts Council, and I know a lot of people were real disappointed that Evening Shade didn't continue. We moved it from Johnston Park out to the Greenway, and that didn't work, and so we just decided not to do it anymore. But now this will be bringing it back downtown. Mm -hmm. It'll be at the plaza, the courthouse plaza. That's correct. And so I think that's going to be good. I think it's from 6 to 9 or something like that. There'll be live music. Yep. There'll be bouncy th houses. There'll be all kinds of things. So yeah. they'll get people back downtown again for an event once yep. a month. Yep, yep. And that's really, um, we, we think that it's good to uh, re-invite people to the downtown area. Um, Main Street Director um, Sharon and myself and the Main Street Board have always, uh, you know, looked at, at opportunities that, that, you know, you know, maybe there's people out there that haven't, don't, haven't had opportunities to, to go downtown and right. that's what we're trying to capitalize on. You know, we, we really want to um, um, build on to have a, a, you know, I, I think I think we all know we have a great downtown. Yes. So, but I also think that a lot of people that that it may be underperforming a little bit. Closes is that at seven o'clock or it, something. It closes, yeah. mm -hmm. and and a lot of downtowns that are successful. Then um, you name a number of communities that that you know they're open, they're they're vibrant, they have a lot of people living down there. Um, the more people you have, it, it makes it safer, and and we're really working towards coming up with uh, an environment um, and an action plan and, and how to how to get there in the downtown area. And I think that's great. I know Cafe Roma stays open past five or six, but most of our restaurants downtown are closed at five, or, and and so for people to come downtown, you know, unless they're coming to Cafe Roma, then. 
I'm not sure where they're going. You know, and the Bald Headed Bistro is, they're open in the evenings, but, mm -hmm. but we need a reason for them to come downtown. And I know with this first Friday festivals, that might help some of the restaurants to stay open, knowing people are going to be down there and they're going to want to eat. Mm -hmm. and, and also for people to come down and see what we have to offer downtown. Yep. Yes. You know, it, and, that's, and that's where we want to be uh, in, the, in the future, I believe, is, is to that every, every Wednesday that when people look at the newspaper or Thursday, first thing they do is they open that up and they say, what's going on in downtown? And that we have something going on um, every week, you know, that we have some type of uh, entertainment area where we can have music and festivals and farmer's market. And, and we're really trying to solicit community input and trying to, it, it's really exciting. We have a number of new uh, potential developments that are out there simmering. And, yes. And, and, and it's just really uh um, we can really feel some energy starting to to boil up. Of course, this one of my one of my things that I would love to see Cleveland do is to have a convention center or some kind of large building so that we're not having high school graduations out on football fields, which that's fine. But you know, some place large enough for us to accommodate a thousand people. Yeah, yeah. And so now I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I'm just going to say. I know that there's some some talk about the um, the Maytag property downtown. Yeah. So I, I think there's some things that may be happening, and I'll get you back on. We'll talk about that when Good. when you've got something to really talk about on that. But that's what 19 acres or something. How many acres is it? It's 90 acres. 90 acres. It's 90 okay. acres, and and I don't mind being put on the spot. Okay. I, that's that's why I'm here to be put Good. on the spot. Good. Let me put you on the spot. <laughs> what do you want to tell us about that property? Well, you know, it's it's 90 acres. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the a part of the the vibrancy um, of the past. You know, it was a the major job provider. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that work there live in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, it's really the the part of the really core history and and um, fabric of of who we are. And obviously, we were blessed to be able to have them stay in the community and move to yes. a new facility. Yes. But it's it's left uh, another it's it's an opportunity there to well what what's the future hold for that property, and um, you know there's going to be dialogues with um, um, our friends at, at, at Whirlpool, mm -hmm. um, you know I, I think they're committed to working with us to um, come up with a plan that works for them and works for us. Um, they have a number of examples that, that they've been successful, but when you think about you know the neighborhoods around there, and having um, 90 acres, which you know adds some more, some new um, housing, adds some more commercial, adds some uh, recreational type facilities. Give me a convention center. Uh, you know, <laughs> I would will invite you to the meeting, and and you can you. you can you can make that that pitch. But but that's the kind of thinking that we need. Is I think that everything is on the table, and and everyone should be really excited about. Um, what lies ahead is because it's not often that right in your core downtown area that right. you have uh, a, a blank canvas and you get to to do that. Now we have to give the city council an awful lot of credit mm -hmm. because um, I think they have a very good understanding of some of the things that need to happen. Um, they're getting ready to have resources and funding available to to partner. You know we. We don't want it to be that, that this is a city project, but we want to be there to help partner with uh, people in the private sector, nonprofits, foundations, other business investors, and and we just think that that um, we've come a long way, and the council deserves a lot of credit for um, leading the charge on a lot of that. Kathy was just on before you, and we talked about the public-private working together yeah. on things like this because yeah. you can't. You can't do it by yourself. You, you're yeah. going to have to. Uh, you're going to have to have some some cooperation. And I'm so glad that we're we're doing that. I wanted to mention real quickly. I, I don't drive around in town very often, but one day I was going out to a friend's house, and I had to go by Mayfield School at three o'clock. 
That was not a smart move on my part. <laughs> I, I, I don't realize, and since my child is no longer in school, I, I just don't realize the congestion we have at our schools. Yeah. And of course, a lot of times I go, I leave the shop and go out uh, Okoy Street by Okoy Middle. And and so I see where that's in your priorities on, on the traffic situations mm -hmm. because, and, and all of our busy situations seem to be around our schools. Yeah, and our, our commercial centers and schools. A um, um, little bit different timing. Schools are a little bit before five and, and our commercial mm -hmm. centers are a little bit later. So, but you get that, that, you know, from three to six, you have some, and, and what we saw in, in the survey results is that people um, weren't satisfied with that. And, and that's why you do that so that you can give information to the decision makers and the city council to put, start putting together a plan. You know, we're not gonna be able to resolve those issues overnight. No. We, we are not gonna be able to do it no, overnight it, um, this year. But when we put, start putting one foot in front of the other and we start saying, we're gonna do these three intersections and then next year we'll look and see what we can do um, to do that. Now, I think for the future and the, the, the growth that Cleveland is having. And we are having it. And we are having it, um, which, you know, which the, the key point in that is we need to retain our, our small town essence and who we are and and be able to to make sure that 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 we don't we don't lose that but i think that um you know at, at some point we probably need to have some uh, bigger thinking about what are some of our our transportation issues that we may have 25 years from now mm. and and figure out you know are, are there new roads intersection boulevards you know, it's not a conversation today, and nor would I have the answer. But I think um, that's what we're trying to do at the city is trying to, you know, take care of some of the issues now, but get our eyes above the horizon so that we can um, start formulating a plan so the people that come in after us are successful. Right, and and this isn't throwing off on our forefathers, but the traffic situation. They didn't plan for 25 years out. They didn't plan for our growth mm -hmm. like, like Cleveland has grown. And Bryce gave me the sign that our time's up, but I'm not quitting. Is that all right, Bryce? <laughs> okay, very good. Because I just want to ask you one other question. When you had your district meetings, yes. um, I think the, the physical response, I think you had a lot of people show up for these meetings. Yes. And I think that's wonderful. So that shows that people are concerned with their districts and what's happening and one thing somebody has said to me two or three times, and you may not even want to address this today because I can get you back, um, about recycling. We yeah. used to have the recycling situations, yeah. and, and we don't do that anymore. So is that on our horizon? Well, um, our, you know, we have a solid waste contract with, mm -hmm. with Waste Connections. Um, we bid that out every five years. Um, I think the contract comes up a couple years from now. And, and I think that that's probably the time to have that conversation. Oh, yes. So, be, you know, because that's, that's the, the c contract and the deal we have with them. Now, I'll tell you that we asked a question in the survey about would you like to have um, um, curbside recycling? Mm -hmm. And the answer, um, about 85% of residents said yes. I kind of felt that because some of the... The, the people that are saying things to me are people who are new moving into our community. And the first thing they said to me was, I said, how do you like everything? Well, you know, where we came from, we had a bin for glass and a bin for cardboard. And, a, and I'm thinking, okay, I think that's wonderful that you came from a place like that. So, And I think at one time we had something similar to that. We did so, have recycling. Okay. We, and, you know, the different times and may have been during the recession and I haven't really back and went back and looked at it. But, um, you know, that, that, that you know, it's a, a budgetary issue that when we come to that point, you know, it's a it's an additional service and, and may cost a little bit uh, additional. But but we're we're not there um, this year trying to resolve that issue because we have a contract. Joe, thank you so much for being on with me. Like I say, Bryce has already said we ran over, but I don't care. And it was wonderful having you on. And, <laughs> and I'll try, I won't wait 11 months to have you on, but I'll, I will try to get you back on as, as I see 
you know, I love to read the banner, and as I see things that are progressing, I'll, I'll ask you to come back on and update us on, on those things that are progressing. So thank you so much for being on. This is Joe Fivas. He's our city manager, and if you have any questions, call Joe. <laughs> and, and, and just to add on to that, if there's anyone in the community or yourself that uh, wants an update or any information, uh, I have an open door. Um, call me, um, contact me. Happy to do whatever, whatever needs to be done. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Folks, don't go away because I'm going to be right back with some events that are coming up that you might want to know about. So watch our commercials, support our sponsors, and we'll be right back.